Hey Lucas, we are almost there. I regret your course on the history of mathematics. Didn't work as we expected. As your advice counselor, I am sure that this course on the history of music theory will be perfect for you. Yes ma'am. I will express all my admiration for all the wonders and glory of the history of music, and will delight in the magnificent box scale and its perfect chords. And I will easily pass all the exams. Well, Lucas, sometimes your comments get me confused a bit. Just try to enjoy. Hey, look at the posters, they might look a bit pompous. But don't be afraid, they are so friendly and open-minded. Yes ma'am, just a bit pretentious. Don't worry. I will ask just a pair of questions, and I am sure I will learn a lot. Oh, I am getting late again. I must enter the class right now. Bye ma'am, and thanks a lot. Oh, was that Beethoven's flat major chord that I just heard? Or it was. Oh my. Hey look, is the new student that is coming late and entered the show playing his favorite piece, Slapping Doors. Okay, don't worry. At Random Chaos University, we are open to all kinds of new music styles. Let's bring him big applause for his performance. No applause at all. Um. Well newcomer. Are you feeling the blues? Could you please cry elsewhere? Hey look, another one bites the dust. He felt flat on the floor. Um. As I was saying. The melody, is a sequence of notes accompanied by rhythm and chords, and the preference for any piece depends on many factors, including our actual mood. On the other hand, the consonance of two or more sounds is a physical phenomenon that depends primarily on our ear's capacity to perceive and process the sound's input. By the year 500 BC, Pythagoreans found consonant the chord of two strings, the first having double the length of the second and their frequency interval was later called the octave. They also realized, that multiplying all the frequencies in a chord by the same value, produces a chord that is perceived as similar to the original. So they thought, that multiplication and division were the keys to harmony, and decided to divide the whole domain of sounds into octaves, powers of two. Then, they inserted notes within the octave interval, according to some amazing rules, and produced the Pythagorean scale. Time passed, and many modifications to the scale came to light, as Ptolemy's scale and its European variations. Musicians started to make musical compositions by orchestrating instruments, but had so many issues in doing so, because of the structure of the scale. So, the musical giant, Johann Sebastian Bach, came to the scene, and surpassed all those problems. His gorgeous geniality, brought to light his magnificent perfect scale, and this way, he solved all the ancient obstacles. He divided the octave interval into twelve geometrically equal parts, so the interval between two consecutive notes, became the twelfth root of two. And nowadays, most modern instruments are graduated with that scale. So the geniuses from past times brought us, for example, the perfect major chord, you play this way. Excuse me professor. Why is that chord perfect? Well, that's a silly question. It is perfect because the note interval G, is called the perfect fifth. Okay professor. But why is the perfect fifth perfect? Oh my. The perfect fifth is perfect, because that, is what Western music theory says. Excuse me professor. But I need to know why music theory states that the perfect fifth is a perfect chord or interval. I mean, is the perfect fifth more or less perfect than the octave? I think there should be any scientific fundament to state that something is perfect. Am I wrong? Student, it is not about right or wrong. It is just that you must learn that those superior intellects, I mean, superior people created Western music theory. The superb work of Bach corresponds to a truly matchless superior culture. And before such a wonder, we must praise it, revere it, and prostrate ourselves. Their work came from spiritual highness and so much love for humanity. And we must be grateful for the incredible show of compassion, altruism, 
modesty, generosity, magnanimity, and humanity they put into this. No way! So sorry. Love? Humanity? Modesty? Compassion? I mean, can I comment? I do not see the history of music the way you say, but as I will show now on the blackboard, using my smartphone. Our current state of living could cloud our judgment, disguise the big picture, and prevent us from noticing what the music theory foundations and its whole structure really are. More than 2000 years ago, Pythagoreans were right when stating that some ratios, for example, the ratios 2 to 1 and 3 to 2, among others, were so consonant. That's fine, but then they arbitrarily decided by royal decree that the multiplication by 2 should be the way for dividing the whole realm of sounds in octave intervals. Moreover, they ordered by royal decree that all notes and chords played in any octave intervals be considered the same. And that is something totally false, which we will discuss in a future opportunity. But, they needed more notes within each octave interval. So they decided again by royal decree that each octave should be divided using the factor 3 halves. This way, they constructed a new different and arbitrary curve for each octave interval. And again, by royal decree, after doing all their multiplications and divisions by three halves, they arbitrarily discarded some results and selected others at will, with no scientific base. This is appalling. You're being so disrespectful. Shut up. And on top of all this, the process of multiplying and dividing by three halves never closes to the value two. I mean, the octave, which is the fundamental key to their celebrated harmony. The octave did not belong to their three halves process because it yielded other values, close to, but different from two. So their new discrete curve within the octave, that is, their scale, does not fit the whole curve of sounds based on the octave division, and this was a failure in the foundations of their universal and perfect harmony scheme. But no problem, they again had the hidden card of royal decrees to disguise any mistake. So, as it usually happens in sects and cults, the exegetes of the octave divisions decided to entitle such error with a pompous, superior, and royal name. Pythagorean comma. Perfection at its best. The best of the best. This is outrageous. Shut up. This guy will make me get into a real coma. So in subsequent times, the fans of those ancient octave myths urgently needed to surround the comma with all kinds of ridiculous and whimsical mysteries and myths, this way disguising the error, and imprinting mystery, relevance, and divinity upon the comma and their scales. Europeans also adopted the comma and the octave divisions, and made their variations to the scale, always complying with the ancient divine deities and their mandates. Later came Johann Sebastian Bach. Wow! Johann! the protégé of the Calvinistic king, Friedrich der Gross of Prussia. He introduced a new scale based on approximations to irrational numbers. The imposition of his scale was not the result of a deep study on consonants and harmony. Instead, it resulted from a royal decree dictatorially imposed by his protector, the king Friedrich der Gross, even against the opposition of other educated and noble musicians of that epoch. And that is just striking, indeed. Oh, shut up. Ah, uh, I am not feeling well. No, professor, please. He didn't mean that. Surprisingly, some musicians and fans seem to ignore that Bach capriciously substituted the ancient sacred consonant ratios, 3 to 2, 4 to 3, 5 to 4, etc., with other different values. Irrational approximations resulting from multiplying by powers of the 12th root of 2. And you might be wondering, why did Bach dare to do such an atrocity? Did he care about respect for a natural order in harmony? Of course not. Was he making music for the enslaved and inferior people of that epoch? Did he care for any of them? Of course not. He was only interested in quickly producing many compositions, maintaining his status as a protege of the king and earning a lot of money, favors, and comforts. I can't let this pass in my classroom. Bring a rope.
Yeah, let's hang him. Yeah, bring torches too. Bring a roof. And some of those exegetes of Western culture, in their brainwashing, or eagerness in perpetuating their hegemony and alleged superiority, go so far as to affirm that irrational ratios could be better perceived by ear than the Pythagorean rational ratios. At such a low level, they dare to come to prevail. This is outrageous. Shut up. Please student, don't talk nonsense. Um, you are talking about superior intellects. Be more respectful to them. You are so arrogant and pretentious. Ah. Um. Okay, I understand. So I am pretentious and arrogant. Um. Do you mean like the opera tenor who was so pretentious and arrogant that the other tenors noticed? But things were much worse than all I have said. Because those ancient attempts to consecrate the Pythagorean and Ptolemaic scales were used later by the Catholic Church, the popes, and their holy inquisition to dominate the plebis and inferior people with their sacred music. And it got worse in the epoch of Johann Sebastian Bach. Since then and until very recently, no black or indigenous person would even be allowed to set foot in a concert hall and dare disdain such a sacred precinct adorned with that scale's divinity and highness. Notwithstanding, the elite, the selected coterie that controls the financial system and our societies, decided that almost all electronic and physical instruments must be exclusively constructed and tuned with Johann Sebastian Bach's octave divisions. So, people have no way to use any other scale, not based on the imposed octave divisions. And this became even worse for Afro-Americans and Native Americans, whose ancestors were considered inferior races and enslaved people, precisely by those who imposed all those tuning scales. And this strikes me the most, because Afro-Americans and Native Americans have been forced to bow their heads, praise, and revere those music scales and instruments, constructed and tuned with the symbols of their ancestors' slavery and oppression. Indeed, more than music symbols, those were the weapons with which the savages of Western culture manipulated, oppressed, enslaved, and caused them so much humiliation and suffering. But people worldwide should not feel compelled to chain themselves to such eternal prostration. Mainly because there are other alternatives, such as the one detailed on a website I found, that shows a new scale called the triplice, constructed in the interval 1 to 3, and based on a dissonance index calculated scientifically, not related to the ancestral octave division myths. With all the currently available technology, electronic equipment, and software, there is no justification for perpetuating Bach's faulty scale and the ancient octave myths. This is the right time to liberate ourselves from the shameful manias and manipulations of pastimes. And the true liberation is not the false one that is fictitiously obtained with armed revolts and random false liberating warlords and heroes that never lasts over time, but the one that comes out from the supremacy of the authentic liberation of thought and spiritual growth. So my vision of this is very different from yours. Professor, please tell me. Which of the arguments I've mentioned is wrong? You shut up. This is not about right or wrong. Do you mean that you found a new musical scale on a website that uses a very different division of the realm of sounds? And the octave is not the fundamental key to harmony. My gosh. Many people talk nonsense on the internet. You must learn that superior people from past times already created the laws of harmony and imprinted them in Western music theory texts. There cannot be nothing more beyond that. I find your alleged new scale, based on the interval 1 to 3 and a dissonance index, as well as your suggestion on using it as an alternative to avoid supposed impositions from past times, and your outrageous description of our sacred and superior music theory. So pretentious, arrogant, and disrespectful. To the Western culture, this class, and music, you should not dare to talk that way on something that superior minds worked on over and over more than 2,000 years ago, or even more. That's atrocious. Indeed, this is not just about a new music scale I am talking about here. This is also about manipulation and people control, and all the suffering caused by all the dictatorial impositions of true savages from pastimes. That didn't bring out any superior culture, 
but just a bunch of myths, primitive beliefs, royal decrees, and unbearable presumptuous verbiage about flats, sharps, major, minor, comma, perfect diminished, perfect fifth, perfection, magnificence, and much more cheesiness and ridiculous words to manipulate, abuse, control, and exploit Students, people. Shut up. Please leave this room now. Okay, that's it. I learned all I should have from this class. Thanks for nothing. I will put this quote on the blackboard and silently leave. This is an atrocity. Look at this horrible ancient quote. Call the security guards and get him out of these facilities. I'm not feeling well. Please give me my pen. Hi Lucas, how was your music theory course? Hi Susie. Not so well. It is not just a problem with the course, but the entire academic system. The professor was not interested in asking any questions. He told us a story about music theory and its history, and I replied by showing him another different perspective and new approaches. Now, the security guys will come after me to get me out of here. Don't forget to look at the website's music section that I told you about last time. It shows a new open source music scale that does not suffer from the restrictions, primitive beliefs, and myths of all the current imposed scales. Um, I think they are coming after me right now. By Susie. Please, student. You must leave these facilities right now. Take care, Lucas. If you don't mind, I will call your parents. The new winds of change are coming on, and you will be wherever it takes to fight for things to change. All that happened to you in this university is evidence of our current educational system cracking, and the total failure of all our inherited ideologies. Um, yes, the website that you mentioned the other day. Number, music, and the new social doctrine, the new alternative against all the failed ideologies, socialism and capitalism. A truly thorough revolution in our society and the educational system. Yes, Lucas, your fight is not over. More than ever, we shall fight for a truly profound change in our societies. <laughs> That's pretty fun. But you have to leave now, 